Okay. Yeah, so first of all, thanks everyone for jumping in. I really apologize for uh, messing up the uh, times. I think it's uh, actually a good idea to have two daily 30 minute calls to capture as much intersection between the uh, basically Europe, Asia and US, Canada and Latin America. Um, seems like a necessity at this point. Um, I've I've added the agenda to uh, the original invite and to the messages in Slack. Um, first of all, I, I wanted to say thank you for, you know, all of the amazing support and help everyone is assembling. Um, again, please stay healthy and please be mindful about your health, uh, first of all, because, I mean, we're all tired, we're all working 24-7, but sleeping enough, drinking enough water, is a personal priority. Like we, we need your help long term. Please don't burn up. Okay, so the first item on the agenda, um, and I'll, I'll try to skim through those and we can obviously jump in and, and have uh, a more in-depth discussion. Uh, it does seem like Trello is working in general in terms of organizing the knowledge and you know just bits and pieces, uh, splitting things into main problems and subtasks. Uh, the first thing is uh, getting through the blockers and hitting the last six people to finish the scoring. Hopefully we get 20 by the time of the call tomorrow and can proceed. I'm not sure if we were able to, to hit 20. Uh, Daniel, you would probably be the best person. I'll check on that right now. To help with that. Uh, I think it's a good uh, you know, nudge to basically say, hey, we're having a deadline like two hours from now, we're finishing uh, the scoring and like just just go with whatever data we have right now. I do think that we're already seeing some meaningful, uh, you know, subjective reasoning for types of tasks um, that are most important. Obviously, there is bias towards the um, kind of the simplicity of tasks versus the impact, and that's how I think the geography affects virality aspect is uh, standing out. Uh, let me actually share my screen so that everyone is aware what I'm talking about. So for those people that, can you see my screen now? Yeah, I can okay. see it. So can for I those- Can jump in with a quick question? Sure. Uh, I, uh, these are the, the tasks from Kaggle, right? Correct. Where did they come from? Who came up with these questions? Good question. From my understanding, there was a meeting, there was a like small conference or something, and a bunch of people associated with uh, White House uh, and Allen Institute for AI and other people came up with those based on the expert knowledge. Okay. So the Kaggle, the, the, the whole Kaggle project is the same as the AI2 project? As far as you know, they're, they're the same people working on it? Or behind it, you don't know. Okay, thank you. And my understanding is we're using we're using these as as a, a solid starting seed. This is where we're, we're we're going from. We can be incorporating in more stuff, and we haven't talked to other subject matter experts yet. But right now, this is the most solid, concrete, and vetted set of things that we have to go off of. Okay. Yep. So for those who who's not aware, we have this uh, task of kind of subjectively uh, ranking the tasks that we should prior prioritize just for the sake of efficiency and our limited resources and time. Uh, it does seem like the number one is the how geography affects reality. I think, um, you know, if there are people that uh, want to focus on this, we can. But the second most important one uh, is risk factors. I think it, it is really the, the one that is a top priority task just because no one really understands that. And, you know, there is actually at least some data available for that, and there is a huge impact. The next one is transmission, incubation, and environmental stability. And obviously the third one after that is vaccines and therapeutics. And I think it's safe to say that those four, or I mean, the three after ge geography one are the ones that we should be focusing. Um, let's put the deadline of two hours after this call to, um, you know, have as much people filling it out and then basically providing guidance that 
we collectively think those are top three that we should be focusing on. And the next step would be basically unbundling those into separate um, tasks and subtasks. I saw that some person on Trello already created a spreadsheet with um, you know those subtasks, Tina, I think. So we need to check out what, what's there. Uh, I think we're good with, with this piece, uh, unless anyone has any questions or suggestions. Well, hey, this is Steve, um, and I'm still trying to catch up with everybody, and there's a lot happening, as you guys see on Slack. And um, one of the things I wanted to do was try and organize all these different notebooks that are uh, in some way classifying the documents. Um, and uh, I kind of realized that we didn't really have a common output in terms of how we're ranking those. So I think uh, it would make sense to rank those tasks, uh, particularly when it comes to asking the subject matter experts to, um, to, to analyze documents within one of those subcategories. But I don't think we need to necessarily rank them when it comes to the NLP that's being done on the document. So I'm just trying to think through the flow here. And I guess, you know, again, I'm just trying to catch up. But what I'm thinking and trying to suggest on Slack, and, and I'm even raising my hand to do some documentation here, is that what we do is we organize the documents along the lines of those 10 tasks. Um, we then ask the subject matter experts for their opinions. And that's where I think the ranking becomes very important because it's a lot of work for them to go in and read the articles. Um, but the, the NLP and any kind of scoring that we do probably should score all 10 of those at the same time because I don't think there's any extra cost in doing that. Once we've kind of worked through your top three, uh, then uh, we can take that approach and apply it to the next yeah. three and, and the next three. I agree. Yeah, this is just a way for us to, you know, move faster and more efficiently. Yeah. So, uh, again, if you have some ideas, please put them in, into Trello card as a task and we'll, we'll get some team to, to help you formalize that as, as a problem to solve. So the next piece is actually relevant to your point, which is wrapping up similarity uh, task and preparing progress report. I just report. want to add one more thing. Um, uh, okay, so uh, sorry for my face marks. Actually, there is some, I have some uh, coronavirus problem in my drone, so they just uh, 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 told to go out and just uh, give medicine. Sorry for that. Okay, so maybe I am also working with the classification tax for the research paper. And I am maybe uh, previously I also described something in the Trello or some discussion board that I'm just using the cyber and other uh, name entity recognition for the feature metrics. And from there, I just want to go for the classification tags uh, uh, that which research paper are going to uh, talks about the medicine or some other things. So I think it's uh, quite uh, similar to to the or uh, it's quite helpful for the um, classification tasks for the import, find out the important or find out the research paper that talking about the medicine or therapy or some other things. And I just add one more thing uh, that uh, in the, uh, in the Trello, there is uh, one CSV, uh, one Excel file for the name of the researcher and uh, email and some other things. Uh, okay, I just see it and I just add there some, there are Google citations and they are institution names and I just uh, gather it for, uh, try to gather it from the Google Scholar API. Uh, so I, I just run it in my computer, uh, but uh, sorry, maybe I need uh, some extra time because uh, I'm not in my room now. Yeah. To just, uh, uh, no problem. I, I will be a little bit rude here and interrupt you. We don't have much time for getting in depth. Uh, I just want to go through all of the things and then you can jump yeah. into those specific tasks okay. and uh, yeah, yeah, channels sure, sure. And, and discuss those. So yeah, sure. the next one is wrapping up similarity task and preparing progress report and what we've achieved so far with it and what it gave us. Most relevant papers, authors. I think there is a gap in what we achieved in terms of like presenting it to the general public. So if anyone can help with with that process, would be good. I think Platon finished uh, the actual code and Mike will be able to. Um, present the, the final Power BI visualization sometime when he wakes up. Uh, so let's, let's see what happens. The next one, task slash team pairs, achieving time availability plus skill redundancy. 
I think we're already seeing the limitations of us uh, being able to assign, you know, redundancy to, you know, both people that are available and are skill matched to specific tasks. So I've created that Trello ta task to just create basic structure who's available, who has certain skills. Again, if someone has any better structure, please jump into that Trello task and help us figure it out. Uh, the next one, prepare for integration of domain, domain experts as soon as possible. Uh, this is super important. I uh, do see that we've actually accomplished some of the work here with uh, figuring out like what type of people we need. I think Maya created a document on basic communication. Um, the thing that we need here, and maybe Daniel, you would be great to jump in and kind of prioritize what, what is the most important thing we will lack like here. Uh, yeah, you mean just this is in terms of that, that, that structural piece? Sorry, I was looking at another. Yeah, yeah, domain expert communications piece. Yeah, I mean, it, seem, it seems like there's, there's two, two things come to mind in terms of how we may want to prioritize it. One of them is figuring out, um, just looking at the actual network that we have right now in terms of who can we talk to, who would be the best fit. It seems like one of the things um, we may want to be doing is, uh, I know again, Maya has some ideas in terms of World Health Organization. Um, so crafting, crafting what it is that's the core message of what it is that we're trying to ask them, getting across clearly who it is uh, that we are so that, so that they're able to get us the right information. Um, and then a little bit of research, I think, is, is a key piece of, of who are the different organizations who we, sh we should be trying to, to get in touch with. It's the mixture of the ones that are potentially have the highest impact and who what they're doing, the data that we're trying to analyze is most salient to. Yeah, sounds good to me. I think this is one of those tasks that don't really require any technical talent and that's why it's crucial for people that are listening to this that are not technical. Please help us figure this out. This doesn't require any AI or machine learning skills. This is pure research and, and applying of your judgment and reasoning. Uh, the next piece, ex, uh, expanding external communications to prepare for different types of needs. Uh, I've talked to uh, CEO of Kaggle, Anthony, yesterday, uh, filled the request uh, to Google to give us the uh, credits for Google Cloud Platform. Uh, someone, uh, Daniel mentioned that he reached out to Trello. Basically, we need some form of structure. Again, like I'm working on a website. There is actually a website live, which is like uh, who and what we do, but like we're gonna work on that later today to finalize the structure and the messaging so we can you know, look official and get through the noise of uh, you know, a bunch of people that are trying to get through uh, to get some um, you know, upgrades for, for the platforms and tools. And the last piece, uh, which is a super technical piece that we definitely need help uh, with, um, and whoever has understanding of the efficient pipeline that we can apply, please jump in to that task. I think Platon was the last person that um, proposed some structure on how to do that with GitHub plus Colab uh, plus S3. Um, and yeah, like if, if there is some understanding how to do it efficiently and enable this collaboration of hundreds of people, please propose. That's pretty much it. That's everything that I wanted to go through. If you guys have any points that you would like to discuss, please. On the uh, GitHub CI integration um, note, I, I posted uh, some of the some questions there, um, and and basically what you know I think we need to clarify in order to put a process in place is what that process has to be able to deal with respect to the technologies that need to be supported, and wh where our inputs and outputs are. That's um th so someone at the beginning of the meeting I didn't catch your name, but um you know, was mentioning associating those with the tasks, but another thing that we definitely need to have some clarity on in order to put any process in place is what technologies are going to be used and need to be supported during any integration process. Yeah, I agree. Uh, do you think you can help us figure that out? I, 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 I can absolutely, you know, help with the um, implementation of that. The 
thing that I, is blocking me that pre pre prevents moving forward, and I think would block anyone, is we ha do not have, um, or we just haven't cle yet clearly defined what technologies we're going to be using. Because yeah. I think everyone has right. different familiarity. I think I can answer that very quickly in terms of, uh, like, I left this comment in Trello card, which is uh, the key pieces, data sets. We definitely need versioning and storage for data sets. S3 uh, is a potential quick solution. Not sure about any custom platforms for data. There's something called the Open Knowledge uh, Foundation, I think was the name, but it's, it's like a CK something. It's a, you know, open source Python um, web app that does precisely that and exposes um, data sets, versions, and maintains metadata. Perfect. Please send that in comments and explain how we can use it. I think yeah, a it's lot of like it, a Docker image. Yeah, yeah, it's you know the friction of the tool or any tool that we're going to use. It has to be seamless. It has to be very intuitive and ha has to be easy to use. So the next piece is code base. Uh, the GitHub where you, we've created uh, organization. Obviously, like there are some limitations to what we can do, but I think that's a the best way to organize code base. The next thing is versioning of results. Uh, the actual results of the, the models and notebooks are quite large and we need versioning and organization of those too. Um, the, and the last piece is actual notebooks and Colab is the perfect way to do that. Uh, much more efficient than actual Kaggle notebooks. Uh, obviously, there are limitations in terms of computing, and we'll have to figure that out. Hopefully, we get that uh, Google Cloud account with credits, uh, so we don't have, have to worry about that. But basically, connecting the data sets plus code base uh, plus notebooks and results is the, the high-level structure. Sure. Does we're, that help you? That, that absolutely does. The place where there's still a gap is with code base, and we kind of glossed over that. Um, obviously, you know, it needs to work in the notebooks um, that runs Python and our uh, arbitrary packages from the package manager, right? But um, if we're going to run that and, you know, deploy it automatically to a notebook, we would need to know what those, what, what, what would be helpful if we could get a, you know, finite enumeration of what the different technical pieces are. Okay, let me let me write that computer. out as a question and task to figure out. Uh, yeah. Figure out a uh, stack of uh, languages, right? Technologies uh, to be used in the GitHub pipeline. Sounds good. Right. So we, we're, we're we're going to build something. We're going to test it. And we're going to deploy it somewhere, right? Yep. So what are the technology pieces we're going to use, and that everyone. Um, you know, wants to use and their contributions so that we can make sure that the process works and supports that. Sounds good. Um, I have a couple of points to make. Um, so hi, uh, everyone, I'm Sudhir. Uh, point one is uh, we have about three and a half weeks for the first submission, which is April 16th, I believe. And uh, so in, I feel like we should also add a time element to all the different tasks that we're doing. For example, I, I feel like the next important task is to split ourselves into teams, individual teams that pursue each of these tasks. And unless and until we do that as soon as we can, I don't. Uh, there, there'll still be a lot of noise in how we're working, because once we're able to split into the teams, I feel like you know, we can divide, divvy up the responsibilities. Someone could take up the actual lead, and then everyone else can just continue to work. And that will also help with organizing our technical stuff, you know, the notebooks and everything. So I was thinking, my, my main point is uh, maybe we should add a timeline element to this and get some decisions going and then push things forward. Yeah, I agree. Not sure how to do that right now, but I feel tomorrow once we have top three tasks and are able to split them into subtasks, we can basically map out the simple Gantt chart of you know when different teams or you know abstract teams will be working on those specific subtasks. And we'll, mm -hmm. all be, we'll be able to have some you know, time element to it. Sounds good. Yeah. And just to add, go ahead. Uh, my question is: Is this um, is this group calling ourselves Corona Y? That's uh, just uh, to explain my reasoning. I tried to buy any Corona domain, and <laughs> all of them are bought out. It's insane. 
like someone is hoarding all the possible domains and that was the shortest one that I could possibly buy. And that kind of matched the, you know, why, why we're doing this. Some people started saying that uh, it's a funny wordplay on coronavirus, but I haven't <laughs> intended on that. If, if it's at all of use, my, my wife does um, branding and communications for nonprofit organizations. That's, that's her thing. Um, I, could, I could see if she'd be willing to spend a little bit of time with us figuring out what we might want to do that's, that's like kind of clearly conveying our message is available as a domain name uh, and, and can kind of help, help bring in those right flags and, and crystallize things for it. Yep, that would be great. Thank you. I, I personally like the name. It seems very suitable for the short time frame that we have. Yeah, it's it's general enough, abstract enough, and kind of leads you to curiosity. What what the heck are we doing? And and one thing I'll just quickly mention because I know that the, uh, the the timeline has come up a couple times around the the submission, the sort of the deadlines on the Kaggle thing. To just say that I think we really were using Kaggle um, as uh, an inspiration point and as a seed, um, but that really what 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 our deadlines and stuff uh, are what's core to them is. How do we get information out that's actually going to be actionable for the people who are trying to, to figure things out and, and make things better? Um, and how do we get that to them in a timely fashion? So uh, any of those deadlines that are able to help kind of kick us in the ass and get us moving are great. Um, but that, that really the key thing is how do we as quickly as possible start getting usable intelligence that people are able to, to operate on? I think that's a really good point um, because you know, the problem is bigger than a Kaggle competition. Um, but from a practical standpoint, uh, you know, Kaggle competition adds value in that it creates visibility for what we're doing and makes the end result more accessible. So if we can leverage that to add more value to the product, we should. Uh, I just wanted to mention briefly that, uh, so I work at Deloitte, which is one of the largest financial services uh, firms, I guess, in the, in the world. Um, and our, the, the director for our, our uh, Central European office, where I'm based in Prague, is interested in um, giving some of the employees in my, in my team time uh, during the day, like during the work day, to be able to work on this. Um, and like, I'm not super corporate, I'm super technical, but I'm sure that somebody on my team would be able to do uh, like uh, graphics and marketing and all this other stuff. Uh, and we have connections all over the globe. So um, I'm, I'm really pushing for that and I should have an answer by tomorrow, I think. So I hope that's that awesome, comes. man. Actually that's just amazing. checking on, on that with the Deloitte collection connections. Cause I mean, I know I'm, I'm working in the VR world mainly and Deloitte is such a huge sponsor for the different conferences and things that are going on. Um, would there be somebody there who we could maybe talk to to see whether they might be into throwing some resources at helping us get the computational power and, uh, and other pieces that we need going? Uh, yes, actually. So we're partners with the uh, global, or sorry, with the uh, Google Cloud Platform stuff. So I actually, I'm already in contact with our partners at Google. Um, I uh, might have a meeting with them later this week, but I, I can't guarantee that it'll be tomorrow. So we've only exchanged a couple of emails. We'll schedule something whenever they have time. So um, it looks good. Like I'm super excited, and everybody seems really motivated. Uh, whether that translates into actual actual action uh, tomorrow, we'll see. So. <laughs> Yeah. For anyone pursuing those things, let's let's check on what are the things that you need to give us the best chance of getting a, a positive response from them, and we'll make sure that we get those communications and pieces. Um, if you if you get, if somebody can put together like a, a really easy to follow presentation, it could be a PowerPoint. I know that sounds terrible, but like it's a. It's a global I think word, that so. uh, you know um, mission document that Daniel is working on will be super. Uh, guys, um, I have an experience on submitting. Uh, my data scientist work for uh, Deloitte for an audit and I kind of I'm kind of familiar with the format that the sort of requirements so and uh, basically how do they look at things etc so if you want my help on that task I mean absolutely yeah, yeah great same here even even I can uh, help out with that I'm an ex-consultant as well I was working for ZS Associates it's a pharma consulting firm Okay, so I wrote out, figure out how to integrate non-technical talent to help us. What do you need to activate people outside of Kaggle? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I've also contacted some of the virologists at the University of Missouri, which is where I used to live, so I have some contacts there. Um, and we should have some of them joining the Slack tomorrow, um, and they're going to be on following meetings. Uh, so 
uh, and secondly, uh, the other virologist in the other Slack group uh, has created like a hand-coded uh, medical care task uh, Excel sheet. I don't know if you guys have access to that, but I can add the link in, in our Slack. Um, but it has everything broken down by a task, question, sub-question, and then different uh, pieces of metadata that we should be extracting based on those questions. Um, and a dictionary of terms and uh, like examples of uh, extracted metadata from uh, articles and stuff. So uh, nice. we have some stuff going on in the other Kaggle, or in the other uh, Slack that I, we should work on getting access to everybody <laughs> for. Yeah. What's the blocker? Because I, I, I like I tried to click a link on our Trello. So I mean, there is overlap. So what's keep prevent, preventing us syncing that up? Uh, just the two, the the two Slack groups are are separate, and, and being able to put the same link in both of them every single time that I see a link. There pop is up. a shared channel thing, right, in Slack. Uh, is there? I think so. I've used it in my work, basically linking completely different organization through one channel. And let me explore that. And do you know who's admin of the cooperative Slack? I can check, I'll send that information to you. Uh, I've never used Slack before. This is my first time using Slack, so I, I apologize, I didn't know that existed. No okay, <laughs> yeah. so yeah, let's, if, let's if figure that out. If doesn't support that, it's really straightforward. Just use, I've used Slack's API to just have a script that mirrors one channel to the other. Yeah, I think that's too much you know, noise. But like, yeah, let's, let's figure There's out. There's a better thing, yeah, definitely. Okay, figure out uh, shared channel between two slacks okay also quick thing that i wanted to ask anyone uh, who has experience with the uh, kaggle in particular i see that uh, the kaggle algorithm really deprioritizes the uh, the older submissions and our notebook is getting behind and i'm not sure what's the best way for us to you know stay on top and just uh, make sure that random people that jump into the competition see our notebook see some structure so if anyone has any idea how to you know make sure that happens just let us know well do we have a single notebook or are there multiple notebooks so i attempted to create this notebook that is not technical notebook but basically a, a shared uh you know okay. communication channel and we have like 40 upvotes it's already on the second page i believe and it used to be at the very top and that that's how we got primarily like 100 people in the first couple of days. But as it's sinking down, like we get less and less people. Okay, so keeping it at the top means posting more? Uh, I'm not sure, like I, I don't know how the algorithm okay. works. Okay. Uh, okay. You could uh, post something new on there. Uh, Zakash, uh, if you can update it. Yeah, I updated it. So I'll update it. Yeah, if you keep on updating every day with some new, like a uh, summary of uh, the activity that has happened to that, that could bring it to the top. Cool. Which, which notebook is this? Uh, it's called Plus Global Team. Global Team? Okay. Yep. All right. Uh, we're out. I had uh, one, uh, sure. just one more uh, yeah. quick question. Is, uh, are we in contact? Is anyone in our group part of uh, AI2, Georgetown, um, CZI, or any of the, the people behind the data? And would we be interested in, in looping those people in if we were able to? Let's do that. I, I don't think we have any of those people. OK, I was just checking. I reached out Which to somebody here in Seattle. But let's see. OK. All right, uh, so we're, um, we're out of. Regarding delegation, we should possibly look at who the experts are in the fields and have them lead a group um, that can, uh, where they can uh, delegate specific jobs to each person. I think that yeah. way we can get a lot more done then. We are severely understaffed in terms of management talent and we're trying to bridge that gap right now. Uh, I'm talking to a reporter to potentially spread that message and let's see what happens because essentially it's just a couple of people that have those project management skills trying to organize 200 people which is extremely imbalanced so let's see what happens today tomorrow all right guys thank you everyone uh i tried to
to, to hit the 30 minute mark here just to be super efficient. I think I'm gonna schedule another daily call uh, later today to hit uh, the people that are missing this out. If not, uh, we'll definitely have the one uh, tomorrow around the same time. All right, stay healthy. Thank you. Stay productive. Thank you. All right, thanks thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.